Shalom family. Um, I regret that I was not able to come to you live. Um, internet started acting up, so I just decided to just record this and upload it. This is something that has been on my heart for quite some time now, for at least a week now. And I wanted to bring this message. Uh, but, you know, there were some things I think I needed to see a little more, you know. But it's something that I can't get away from. And I don't think neither can you. But it's a truth that I know that we seem to ignore it from time to time. Because it seems like the Most High is always bringing me back to it. And so what I want to attempt to do is bring a little more light to it and encourage you to continue to remember um, what this is about, what this walk is about. This is one of the things that I feel that is so important in this walk. Now this one is titled Damn It or Bless It. Cut and to the point. Damn it or bless it. I think we don't realize how important our words are. I think we don't realize what words do. Words are so powerful until you can actually damn things and cause these things to go at a certain course of life by the words. You can change the course of life for things just by your words. Now you can say to me, I don't know, brother, is that scriptural? Is that in the Bible? You know, is it in the word? Well, yes, it is. It is in the Word, and I'm going to show it to you. But not just it being in the Word, it's a fact. And this is a fact that I have proven, and many others have proven this, right? But I want you to take a look at this again. This is something I want to show you here. Now, if you remember, at least two years ago, we did this, this um, experiment. And two years, at least two years, I know it was at least two years. I want to show you this one more time. This is the rice that we spoke good to. We call it the love rice. All we spoke to it was love. I love you. It's all we said to it every day, me and the kids and my wife. We all just spoke and said, we love you. Okay? And look at it. It's still white looking. Okay, now, I want to show you the rice that we didn't say anything to. Now, this was two years, and it's still continuing to do, to take its course. Look at that. Look how horrible it looks. We didn't say anything to this rice, right? We just ignored it, and look at what happened to it. Now, watch this. This is the rice that we spoke hate on now look at the top of the rice see that dark black ugly looking mold and mildew this this is seem like it's growing in this rice in the center of it and i beg to agree it's amazing that the one that didn't get any words died off quicker so life needs words wow I want you to pay attention to this because we know Yah spoke. He spoke everything into existence by the word of Yah what heaven's made, right? So I want you to understand where I'm going with this because I think we don't realize that we have the power to speak to our situations. You have the power to speak to it, right? You have the power to speak to your... your um, Vital organs. You have the power to speak to your own mind. You have the power to speak to the elements around you, to the devil even, and tell him to where where he needs to go. You have the power to do this. And people will say, No, you don't, no, you don't. The, the Messiah said you had the power, right? You could change the course of life. Now I'll prove it to you, right? Let's go to Mark. This is chapter eleven. And I'm going to start at verse, uh, I think it's 23. Let me go here. Mark chapter 11, 
verse 23. And this is what it says. Now starting at verse 22. It says, And Yahushua answering saith unto them, Have faith in Yah. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. It's just said that you will have whatsoever you say. If you speak it and doubt not, you will have whatsoever you saith. That's the word. You can't get away from this. That is the word of Yah. It's right there in your face. Okay? It's the word of Yah. It's right here in your face. I think we got to understand how powerful the words are. The words are so powerful. Let's look at this passage in James. I want you to get this right. This passage in James. Let's see. I think it's James chapter... Give me one moment. James chapter 3. Now I want you to pay attention to what it says. Yes. It says, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able and also able to bridle the, uh, the whole body. So he says, man, if you're able to bridle your mouth, right? If you if you don't offend in mouth, in your words, then you are a perfect man. Wow. Listen to this. It says, behold, we put forth, we put bits in the horse's mouth that we may obey, that he may obey us. And we turn about their whole body. Now that bit is that piece that they put in the horse's mouth and they got the thing onto. So when you're riding the horse, you control the horse back, doing his head like this pretty much. That's what it's talking about, right? It says, And behold, also the ships, which though they be so great, are driven of fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small helm. In other words, the steering that they use to steer the ships, right? It's very small, but yet it's able to turn that big ship. Then it says, Whosoever, whithersoever the governor listeneth. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts of great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Now, your words are kindling a fire. Pay attention here. Right? It says, And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every beast, for every kind of beast, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea, is tamed, and have been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Wow, listen to this. There, therewith bless we Yah, even the Father, and therewith curse we men which are made after the similitude of Yah. Out of the same mouth proceed of blessings and cursings? My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Do if a fountain send forth the same place sweet water and bitter? Can a fig tree, my brother, bear olive berries, either a vine or fig? So can no fountain yield both salt water and fresh water. Okay. Now, I want you to understand what it's saying here, right? This is so important that we get this because it's telling you how the tongue can be, right? 
Now let's go to verse 6 here because I just told you it can change the course of nature. It's right here. It says, And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell. It just told you right there that your tongue have the power to change the course of nature. Mm. What's amazing is in the passage that I read in um, Mark chapter 11, where he talked about speaking, have faith in speaking. Did you know he's talking about prayer? Right? Have faith in speaking. Do you know how many people's lives have been changed with prayer? I want you to pay attention to this, right? Because let's go back to Mark now again. Let's go back to Mark chapter 11 and watch this. Because I only read the first two verses, 22 and 23. Let's go Mark chapter 11. Let's look at verse 24 now. Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Listen to what it says here. It says, Therefore I say unto you, Whatsoever things ye desire, when you pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Do you know the number of times I've seen people's lives change through prayer? I mean, I've seen it. I've seen changes. I've seen mothers praying for their sons. Mothers praying for their daughters. Daughters praying for their parents, sons praying for their parents, and I've seen people change as a result of prayer. You understand me? It has changed the course of some people's nature, changed their course in life. You understand me? I think we just don't understand the power of it. Anytime you could speak words to some rice and cause it to start to mildew. And look awful inside of it. Look inside that jar. I don't know if you can see how bad that looks inside there. The stuff that's floating around on inside there. Look at it. Right? Anytime you can speak to it and cause it to look like that. Or you can speak love to it. And it continues to look white and clean. Look at that. Right? Anytime you can speak to it. And cause this, then there's something about our words that we need to understand is power in it. Hallelujah. You need to start, you need to practice speaking to things in your life. Speaking to these things, right? Things in your life. Speak life. Don't you know either you're going to damn it or bless it? That's how it is. You're doing one or the other every single day or you're not saying nothing at all. And let me say something. Not saying nothing at all is worse than cursing it. Look at that. Not saying nothing at all. Look at this. This is the right we didn't say anything to. We just ignored it. And it made it look worse than the, than the rights we spoke hate to. This is for real. You understand me? This is a test we did on this rice two years ago. You could do it yourself. Get yourself three jars of rice. Put a little water in it, right? Fill it with water. And speak to one of them love every single day. Put H on the top of the other one. Put it and speak hate to it every single day. And the last one don't say nothing. And watch the change. It's going to happen right before your eyes. Me and my family, me and my wife and children, we sat back we watched and we slowly watched it change. And we were like, wow, look at this. It is absolutely amazing. And so I'm trying to tell you, either you're going you're gonna to damn it or you're going to bless it either way it goes. When you wake up in the morning, you're going to damn or bless your day. Right? And if you start off your day complaining with angry and, 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 and bad emotions and words coming out your mouth, then guess what? You're going to damn your day. You're going to cause problems in your day. But if you start off the day realizing that this is the day that y'all have made and you speak blessings into your life and everything you do, bless it. You know, I think about this all the time, right? Because... Imagine you go out to your car and your car don't want to start. First thing people do is they, they damn it. Damn it. Right? Well, why not look at the car and say, you are a blessed vehicle. You know that? You are blessed because the Most High has blessed you and has given you to me. You are blessed. Right? And I don't know what's going with you right now, but you are still blessed. What if you just spoke blessing to these things? Right? 
instead of cursing and damning things all the time, right? If something don't go like you want it to, you don't have to damn it. You can bless it. You don't have to curse it. You can bless it. You understand where I'm coming from? Okay, let's look at these scriptures. I got a couple more scriptures. I'm not going to hold you long, but I had this on my spirit, and I had to bring it. You know, I just had to bring it. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 18. And this scripture here is so powerful. When I first read this scripture, it got my attention years ago. You know, Proverbs chapter 18. And this is verse, I'm going to start at verse 4. Oh, just, just verse 4. But this is what it says. It says, The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters, and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. So it says the words of a man's mouth is like deep waters. Wow! And a wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. So uh, if a man is a righteous man, and he knows Yah, and he's speaking right words you have a well in you a deep well that you can draw from all the time now what is this well for it's to water your world hallelujah it's to water your world that you're in right because your world is like seeds it needs watering it needs life right then you can speak this life into the things that's in your life that's going on. You can speak life to these things. To every area of your life, you can speak life. This is swinging the sword. Hallelujah. You can speak life. I want you to go to Proverbs chapter 18. It's 18 again. This time we're going to go down to verse 20. Now I want you to pay attention to this one, right? This one is so powerful. When I first read this one years ago, I'm telling you, this scripture tells it all. It says, it's Proverbs 18, verse 20 and 21. It says, a man's belly, his belly, is fat satisfied by the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Now, it just said a man's belly, which we know in the scriptures, belly could mean heart, right? A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. So they ain't satisfied with the food of his mouth. <laughs> or what you put in your mouth. It said it's satisfied by the fruit of his mouth. So what fruit comes out of your mouth, this is how you're satisfied, right? And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. So the more you increase, the more you speak, the more is going to come back on you. The more you're going to be filled. Now I got a scripture for you. I got one for you. I'm going to show you the scripture. After I'm finished with this one, I'm going to bring I'll show you the scripture. Because now I just said, so with the increase of your list, the more you speak, right, you're going to be filled, right? Then the next verse says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Wow. Did you just hear that? It just said, the death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit. Do you love it? Hallelujah. See, you got to love speaking the right words. Now, I find it amazing because we do a lot of gardening. We've been doing gardening and planting things for years. And my wife, she goes out and she, and she does, a, when she goes out in the morning, she speaks to y'all. And I know when she goes over by her plants and she's planting things, she speaks to her plants right. And she speaks to these things, right? Now, I've seen this before where people are speaking to plants and they're talking love to them and speaking to them like they're alive, like they can hear you, and they do extremely well. This is a fact, right? Research it yourself. Do it yourself. And you will see life just blossoms up in these flowers and in these vegetables and things, right? Man, pay attention. This one, one young lady... I'm trying to think what was it we saw. But it was somewhere this young lady had um, a piece of a vegetable. It was some vegetable. But it said they said that she spoke love to it all the time. I think it was a cabbage. It may have been a cabbage or something. But she just kept speaking love to it, just nurturing it, taking care of it like it was her own baby. That thing grew huge. 
<laughs> I'm telling you, that thing grew huge. It was massive. You understand me? This is a fact. This isn't no West, no Eastern religion. The problem is we hear this stuff about speaking and meditation and all this kind of stuff, and we act stupid sometimes. We act so stupid when we hear this stuff. We see these people meditating, and, and we hear, oh, man, wait a minute. You know, you're speaking. You, you can't speak things into existence. But y'all did. Yahushua just told you you could, right? Now, understand where I'm coming from. We're talking about faith, right? We're talking about faith. Understand what the scripture says about it, right? About believing. He said that you can speak to a mountain and a mountain be removed. Didn't you who should not speak to a, a fig tree and it withered away? Did he not speak to demons and they ran away? Did he not speak to illness and it left? Huh? Did he not put clay in a man's eyes and speak to him and his sight came back, right? Pay attention to what I'm saying to you here. This is something we got to do on a regular basis. We got to open our mouths and we got to speak. Because if you don't say anything, it's worse than saying something bad. Mm, mm, mm. That's amazing. You got to say something. You got to say something. You just can't ignore your life. Ignore your garden, your, your garden of your life. And you won't speak life into the garden of your life. All these things that's in your life, you need to speak to these things. Trust me. Hear me on it, right? Look at the example that we did. If you need to try this example just to see if it works, try it. What's funny is I saw this example years ago and never, never tried it. But always I saw it and I said, wow, that's deep. And I took it like, hey, it, it got to be true. You know, why would, why would somebody just do it? But I never tried it. And then one day we decided, let's try this ourselves, y'all. And so when we got back the results, I was shocked. I was just totally shocked at it. I said, man, Father, y'all, this is incredible that we got this kind of power within us and we won't even open our mouth sometimes. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. Now, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. A man's belly is satisfied by the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips, the more you speak, shall he be filled, right? Shall he be filled. With the increase of his lips, shall he be filled. Now, remember I said the increase, right? Now, watch this here. Watch this scripture here. Let me go to the scripture. Give me one moment. Now, this is Matthew, and, no, no, I'm sorry, it's not Matthew. Okay, now, this is actually Mark chapter 4. Okay. And I'm going to read verse 24. Now, you know what? I'm going to go a little further back. Let's go to verse 23. It says, If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear. What measure ye meet, it shall be measured unto you. And unto you to hear, shall more be given and he that hath to him shall be given and him, he that hath not from him shall be taken away that which he hath now pay attention here right told you I had the scripture right that measure ye meet is going to be measured back to you mm, mm, mm. so if you don't say much not much is going to happen to you mm, mm, mm. wow if you don't say much, if you don't speak into your environment, into your world, into the life around you, you won't have life. You won't have it. Scripture told you death and life are in the power of the tongue, but if you don't speak life, what do you think is going to come then? If you don't speak life, what do you think is going to happen to your life, right? If you don't speak life into your life, this is going to happen to your life. 
Do you see this? This is what's going to happen to your life. Look at it good and hard. This is what's going to happen to your life if you don't speak life into your life. Hallelujah. This is amazing. Don't you know that your words have the power to preserve? So it has literally preserved this, this, this rice. Our words preserved this rice. It preserved it. So you have the power to preserve your own life. Hallelujah. That's why we got to understand. The scripture says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Hallelujah. Be acceptable in your sight. Are you hearing me? Pay attention. Hallelujah. Know what I'm saying here. This is a fact. This is the word. This ain't some piece of paper or something that somebody just spoke and just wrote in some book. This is the word manifesting in your face. You understand me? Hallelujah. Now I got another scripture. I want you to see this because what you don't understand is how faith works. Faith, literally, when you have faith, faith goes and it grabs something that ain't so and make it so. That's what faith does. Pay attention, right? Now, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. And I want to show you what faith does. Hebrews chapter 11. Okay, now let's start off chapter verse one. It says, now faith, mm, mm, mm. now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So wait a minute. So you mean tell me it's the evidence of something that you can't even see. You don't see it. It ain't there, but it's there. Mm, mm, mm. It's the evidence that is there even though you don't see it. Wow. It's the evidence that that thing is there even though you can't see it, right? You hoping for it, but it's still it's there, right? Then it says, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed, how? By the word of Yah. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So wait a minute. He said that they're made of two different things, right? Because the things that he spoke, watch this. The world was framed by the word of Yah. So there was nothing. And he spoke it and it came into existence. There was nothing and he spoke it and it came into existence, right? There was nothing but darkness. He spoke and it came into existence, right? Pay attention. It says, by faith, Abel offered unto Elohim a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which obtained witnesses that he was righteous right Yah testifying of his gifts and by it he had been dead yet speaketh wow by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death do you see now you can go on and read through this list here okay the list here tells you of how all of these people in the scriptures from Noah, right, to Joseph, to, to all of these people in the scriptures and how through faith they obtained a good report, right? This is what it says, right? They obtained a good report. And keep on reading, Abraham by faith, Sarah by faith, right? Conceived, right? All these things were of faith. Now, I want to get down to this part here where it says this. Okay. Okay. Verse 32. Now it names all these things up to verse 32. And it tells you all these things that, the, that those patriots of old have accomplished through faith. How they succeeded through faith. Then it says in verse 32. And what shall I more say? For a time will fail me to tell thee of Gideon, Barak, Samson, uh, Jephthah, of David, of Samuel, and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms. Listen, who through faith they subdued kingdoms. Man, are you hearing this? 
through faith, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrath, righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of a sword, out of weakness were made strong, vexed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they may attain a better resurrection. Wow. It just told you all this that through faith that they were able to do. They subdue kingdoms. You need to subdue the kingdom that's around you. Your environment is a kingdom. You need to subdue it. Bring it under subjection in the word of Yah. Bring it unto subjection. You understand me? Speak your word of Yah to it. And bring it under subjection. All of those things you're going through in your life. Speak the word to it. Quit being such a wimp. Huh? It's a you being a wimp if you don't speak to these things in your life. Right? You sitting up with a sword. The scripture told you that the tongue is like a sword, right? You sitting up with a sword and won't even speak. Won't even swing your sword. The enemy just beating you down. He done knocked the sword out your hand. And you sit there look at the sword. Can reach and pick it up. You won't even pick it up and swing it. Huh? Speaking is swinging the sword. Right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Understand what I'm saying. And so then faith is powerful. If you have faith and you speaking, right? But watch this, right? Let's go to Romans chapter 10. Watch this. Romans chapter 10. Now listen to what it says here. Romans chapter 10. And look at verse 17. And this is what it says. It says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of Yah. Wow. So basically, just hearing the words that I spoke to you. Because you heard the word of Yah. It told you how all these people subdue kingdoms, and how the word of Yah. So in other words, you're just hearing the word of Yah is increasing your faith. Faith comes by hearing. You're receiving faith just by listening to the words that I'm saying. That's because I'm speaking life into you. Hallelujah. I'm speaking life into you. Take hold of the life and you speak it again into your own self. Hallelujah. Take a hold of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yah is good. It's such a wonderful thing to realize that I have this kind of control in my life. That you could speak the things. Hallelujah. This thing should be this 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 what I'm saying here should be a constant reminder of the power that we have in us to change our life. Hallelujah. The power that we have in us to look like this or to look like this just from not speaking at all, ignoring it. You can't ignore your life. Damn it or bless it, right? You can't ignore your life, right? Speak life into your life and you'll look like this. Don't speak at all. And you really look like you're damning it if you don't say nothing to it. Wow. <laughs> you understand? Damn it or bless it. Speak life. Shalom family.